Were you drafted or did you enlist? Uh, there wasn't a draft going on when I joined the military. I joined uh, in college in ROTC. Where were you living at the time? I was living in Florida. Why did you join? Well, I joined for a couple of reasons. First of all, I, I wanted to serve my country. The other reason is I love airplanes, so I joined the Air Force because um, then I could fly in airplanes. And I guess really the third reason is because they also offered me a college scholarship. So that helped out as well. Do you recall your first days in service? I do. I remember, um, I remember the first time I went on active duty and showed up in California and we all met as a group together. And I had to find a roommate within the first couple of days, so I remember, remember that real well. It was March of 1983. How are your training experiences? I, I love the training. Um, I thought they did a really good job. Uh, I got to do a lot of neat things, everything from sitting in a practice ejector seat to feeling going up a, a pole real fast like you're ejecting out of an airplane to uh, parasailing in the back of a truck. To uh, practice your landing. So we did a lot of neat things. Fl also, of course, flying in the airplanes. Which were, wars did you serve in? Um, I was in the um, um, in Bosnia. I was also in the Gulf Gulf War, uh, Southern Watch. So those are the basically the, the big two that I, that I was in. Do you remember arriving and what it was like? Yeah, I do. Uh, in Bosnia. We were one of the first groups in because we had special airplanes that had air defense systems and, and all that on it. So we went in and uh, it was at night and they only had one light at the end of the runway because they didn't want everybody to know that we were coming in. So, mm -hmm. and we actually took in uh, wood supplies and all that for the, for the podiums for CNN TV and all that, so. Mm -hmm. Did you see combat? Um, well, yeah, it was during the war, so I mean, we had to wear our, you know, our helmets and everything else because some of our airplanes were shot at from the ground, so yes, I did, I did get to see war. Were there many casualties in your unit? Not in my unit because we were flying in airplanes and, um, and we actually took the casualties out. And in other words, we did medical evacuation. It was a big airplane. It was. Uh, um, big one, and we took the nurses and all that in with us. And if they had medical evacuations, we'd take them from Bosnia up to uh, Italy or, or Germany, wherever they need to go. Can you tell me about some of your most memorable experiences? Um, of all of the Air Force or, or during the war? Anything? Anything. <laughs> okay. um, well, I remember going into Sarajevo, which is in uh, former U Yugoslavia, Bosnia now and uh, getting off the airplane and I, I, there was a sign there that said, if you can read this sign, you're within sniper range, which means you could be shot. So I got back on the airplane. Um, I remember um, in peacetime, I remember doing a hurricane relief and taking water and all that into people that had been through a hurricane in the, in the Virgin Islands. I remember that quite extensively. And I remember flying uh, in the Grand Canyon in a military airplane, so that was, interesting, but I had a lot of good memories, but, uh, and they're not all about war or anything like that. It's about help, the help of the people, you know, that needed the help, so. Were you awarded any medals or citations? I was. I, I got um, numerous air medals for flying air missions during the war, um, meritorious service medals. I got a couple of those, uh, Air Force Accommodation Medal, Outstanding Unit Awards, so uh, quite a few. I had about, um, a total of about uh, seven rows of ribbons, uh, of ribbons actually, everything from expert marksmanship to training ribbons to all, all different, all the different conflicts that you're in, you usually get a ribbon for, for doing Bosnia and doing different places. How did you stay in touch with your family? Um, well, computers weren't quite as prevalent as they are now, but we got to call up uh, every few days um, and if you were lucky, like you're in Germany, you, you know, you have a telephone line so that they could call you or you could call them. Some of the other situations in some of the other places you couldn't necessarily call all the time, but you could write or something like that. So you could both write and call back then. And as later on in my career, when computers became more prevalent, then you could send an email back home or something. 
What was the food like? Um, some of the food was good and some of it wasn't too good. Uh, um, uh, sometimes you had to eat the MREs, which are called meals ready to eat, which are in the pouches. And, um, like plain food? Yeah, no, no, like um, backpacking food. I mean, freeze dried and stuff like that because it had to be small so that they could bring a lot of it in for the troops and all that. And those are just basically very high in carbohydrates and high in calories to keep you going and all that. Um, and some of those were actually okay. I mean, they didn't taste that bad. But um, most of the times we, we ate, you know, in, in um, pretty good food, just like what you would have here in high school, a chow hall or whatever, or a food line, you'd get your food. And a lot of times it was just hotel food. We'd stay in hotels. Uh, in the Air Force, you land and either stay on base, and, or if there's not enough room, you go to a hotel. So you just eat just like regular, go to regular restaurants. Did you have plenty of supplies? Yeah, I would say overall we had we had plenty of supplies. Yeah. Did you feel any pressure or stress? Um, I would say there was a little bit of stress going into war, um, just for the, a little bit of the fear of the unknown. But we were well trained and all that, so I wasn't afraid of it or anything. Um, but it's always stressful. When, I think when you when you fly into a combat zone or something like that. Do you do anything special, like a good luck type thing? Well, I yeah. I mean, I carried pictures of the family and all that when you were allowed to, but when you went into war, you didn't take your pictures and stuff like that because you didn't want them to have those if, if anything happened. Um, but yeah, I, I usually carried pictures of the family, a couple pictures of the family with me. How did you entertain yourself? Well, they actually provide movies and stuff like that when you go onto a base or something like that. Bases usually had movie theaters, bowling alleys, stuff like that. So you'd go out with the guys and you'd go out to dinner or whatever and then, you know, you'd go watch a movie. And a lot of the places, you know, with satellites nowadays, it doesn't matter where you are, you can get satellite TV or whatever from a satellite. So there would be TV, you could watch CNN, you could watch sports, they always showed, you know, the major sporting events and all that. So, um, that, that, you know, or, it, or we could travel on our days off, we could travel around the foreign countries that we were in. So it wasn't bad. I mean, I got to see a lot of the world. Where did you travel while in service? Well, um, I actually lived a couple places. Uh, I lived overseas, over in Portugal, in a place called the Azores Islands. Dad's from there. Okay, and uh, and that was a lot of fun. Um, I traveled all over the United States. I lived in California, Illinois, Arkansas. Um, and so I got to travel all, almost all over the United States. And then flying, I've flown over to Japan, Alaska, Hawaii, um, almost all of Europe, uh, South America, Central America, Africa, uh, Saudi Arabia, so the Middle East, uh, Kuwait. Um, so I've been Greece, Turkey, Italy. I've been all over the world. I loved it. And that's another reason really why I, I got into it, because I love to travel. Um, were there any pranks that people would pull on each other? Oh yeah, we pull <laughs> pranks on each other while we're flying, um, especially with the new guys. You in know, the air? Huh? In the air? Yeah, in the air, <laughs> yeah, we pull little pranks on them. Um, and, and, you know, they were just lighthearted pranks, nothing that would, you know, get anybody hurt or anything like that. But yeah, you, you pull little pranks on each other, and um, yeah, I can't go into all the pranks that we did, but yeah, we had little pranks that we do on each other. What did you think of the soldiers? Um, I thought they were great. Um, the people I served with were really, really great. Now, the airplane I was in was called a C-130, and when I started in it, women weren't allowed in that airplane because it was a combat airplane. But about halfway through my career, women were then allowed into combat, so we added ladies in, into the uh, airplane, and that was good. I thought that was good. Um, and so, yeah, everybody was really, really good, real professional both uh, the officers and the enlisted. I, I really enjoyed working with them. And we had to work as a team. There were uh, five people on the crew, so you all had to work as a good team together. Did you ever keep a personal diary? Um, I actually kept, uh, well, we, when you fly, you sort of keep a logbook of the hours that you fly and the locations you go. So in your thought of a diary, I didn't keep, hey, on this day I went to, but I kept in a little book every year 
you know, took off on this date and this time, landed this date and this time, this is how many hours I flew, and then I'd make a little memo of, you know, where I was at or whatever. But not, no long diary or anything. Do you recall the day your service ended? I do, I do. Um, had a retirement ceremony, had a cake, and my wife made me a nice, beautiful scrapbook for my whole career, and it was gorgeous. Where were you? I was in uh, Little Rock Air Force Base, in the officers club at Little Rock Air Force Base. What did you do in the days and weeks after? Um, in the days and weeks after, well, I, I started a second career um, about a month or so after I retired, so I had been sort of working up to that. Um, I took a little bit of time off, because um, you build up leave, or sick days, or how you'd call it, probably in Savannah, but you build up leave, and so, you know, I had some time off, so I, I took a few weeks off and, uh, it was a, and uh, just relaxed a little bit. Did you work or go back to school? I, uh, I worked, actually. I already had a master's degree. I, got, I had a bachelor's when I, um, uh, through ROTC, and then I got a master's when I was in the military, so I actually went to work. But I had to go through training to uh, do the work that I did. Did you make any close friendships while in service? I did. Um, um, yeah, a lot of the people that I flew with uh, were close friends of mine. Actually, I have friends from ROTC from college that I was in Air Force ROTC with that I still keep in touch with. So yeah, it, it goes quite a ways back. Did you join a veterans organization? I did. I joined the uh, the American Legion, which I'm a member of now, and the uh, Disabled American Veterans. I joined uh, the Disabled American Veterans right when I uh, retired. What did you go on to do as a career after the war? After after my time in the service. Um, I was a financial planner for a couple years, and then I uh, actually I, I got married to a lady in West Hartford, so when I moved here, I started substitute teaching at the high school, and then about a year later, they offered me a security position, so that's what I do now, do security at the high school. Did your military experience influence your thinking about the war and the military in general? I think so, because... Um, because I saw some of the suffering that happened over in some of the other countries, and uh, I think we actually did a lot of good, especially you know in Bosnia where where they were you know it was a terrible situation over there for the Bosnians, and uh, the whole NATO group went in there and, and stopped that war, the atrocities that were going on, the ethnic cleansing that was going on in Bosnia, which was just terrible. So um, I think my view is that you know a lot of times we do a lot of good, even though. A lot that's reported is that you know all the damage and all that, but overall, I think there's a lot of good. Sometimes it comes out of NATO and the U.S. going in and helping other countries. Um, in your veterans organization, what kinds of activities does your post or association have? Well, we have monthly meetings, and then uh, just recently, uh, Memorial Day parade. I marched in the Memorial Day parade. Um, and then we do scholarships for even high school students. Uh, Emmett Gillis, one of the students here, won an orator award, a speaking award, um, and, and, and writing award from the American Legion this year. He won our biggest award. So uh, we give out scholarships and stuff like that to kids. Do you attend a reunion? Um, I have attended uh, one of the uh, flying reunions uh, back in Little Rock, Arkansas one time. Um, but there's not too many of those um, uh, that go on, or at least that I hear about. How did the service and experiences affect your life? Well, I, I loved it. Um, I loved the flying. I loved the people that I worked with. And I got some great training. And I made it a career. I, I retired after 20 years, and six months and 18 days. And so um, it allows me to go work another job and yet, like, yet still have you know, some medical insurance and things paid for, so uh, I made it a career because I really enjoyed um, what I was doing, and I enjoyed the people I was, and I love traveling the world. I got to see a lot of the world um, from the air and from the ground.